Dear students, in this module we are going to look at how to calculate the theoretical molecular weight of fragments coming in from the proteins from protein databases. You know that we are trying to find out which protein is there in any given sample. So for that what we have done is we have tried to measure the mass of this sample protein using mass spectrometry in MS1 and compared it with the molecular weight of all the proteins in the protein databases. Of course then we have compared the masses and those proteins in the database that are very close to the molecular weight reported from MS1 then we are in a position to say maybe this is the protein that is there in the sample. But you would note that this is not enough or this is not substantial enough to actually come at a definitive conclusion. As a next step what we do is we try to fragment the protein or peptide in the sample by using different fragmentation techniques and look at the molecular weight of the resulting fragments. The next logical extension of the idea would be to measure the molecular weight of these fragments from MS2 with the theoretical fragments of proteins in the protein database. So what we do is we take a protein from the protein database, we fragment it and then we have the two fragment ions and we compare both of them with the uh, fragments from the MS2. So in order to do that we need to know how to calculate the molecular weight of the fragments coming in from the proteins in the protein database. You know that there are different fragmentation techniques ETD, C, CID, uh, ECD and so on and so forth. Now each fragmentation technique gives you specific type of fragments. These fragments can be made in different sizes of course but the bond will be broken depending upon the type of fragmentation method. Now if you have a fragmentation method that breaks a specific bond then of course you can look at the sequence of the peptide that is there before that bond and after that bond and you can calculate the molecular weight. So this is the idea of how we arrive at the theoretical molecular weights. Let's take a look at this figure wherein the peptide bond here of course you would know that there are multiple peptide bonds in a protein. So if you are using CID it will produce B and Y ions and it will only fragment the peptide bonds that are there in the protein. So if you have these bonds broken then you can add up the molecular weight of all of these atoms and of course before them and you can arrive at the molecular weight of the B ion. Similarly if you add the molecular weight of all of these atoms then you can arrive at the molecular weight of the Y ion. In this way you can say if the molecular weight after CID the fragments and their molecular weights if they compare with the experimental fragments or not. Let's take a look at the mathematical formulation. So if you are using CID then you are of course breaking this bond and the molecular weight of the B ion that is this ion is equal to the molecular weight of the amino acids added up plus so this is the fragmentation result. Here you can see that a proton has been added on oxygen and what you have done is you've just added up the side chains molecular weights plus the N terminal and therefore you will have the molecular weight of B ions. Similarly for the Y ion if you notice carefully we have a proton added as well as a hydrogen added. So in this case you have 2 plus right and you have the 
psi chains added to give the molecular weight of RF and the C terminal. So similarly, if you have some other fragmentation technique that is ECD, then in this case, you can do the same procedure. You can add up the molecular weight of the side chains here. And if you notice carefully, then you have three hydrogens added along with the nitrogen because otherwise it would have been a COOH if it were a protein. But since it's a fragment, then we have this added right here and you can arrive at the C ions molecular weight. Similarly, for the Z ion, you can use minus NH because it has been removed and actually donated to the C ion. So using these equations that I have summarized for you, you can arrive at the molecular weight of all the proteins and their fragments. The important thing to note here is that you will only apply these equations depending on the fragmentation technique that you have. And once you have the fragments from the experiment and fragments from the database, then you can compare and score according to the uh, nearness of these molecular weights. The higher the score, the better the match.